right, good morning. Everybody good today? Happy, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Uh, look to your left or right. If they don't have green on, you can pinch them today. It'll be the only day you can touch somebody. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is uh, Jenny Rhodes. I work for the uh, University of Maryland Extension. I'm the county ag agent or extension educator for agriculture and natural resources in Queen Anne's County. So welcome to our, I can't say annual anymore, but this is our 10th organic production meeting. Today we're going to be looking at dairy, grain, vegetables, and poultry. So uh, we did skip a year uh, last year, but we had had nine years straight. So we've got a really good turnout today. I'm very excited. We've got lots of vendors today. So first I want to um, introduce our team. Uh, Michelle Cavagilli, where's Michelle? Michelle, look at Michelle. Michelle is a, a, a research soil scientist uh, at the Sustainable Agriculture Systems Lab at USDA ARL Spetsville. And Stephen Mursky, where's Stephen? Is Stephen in here yet? There's Stephen. Stephen um, is a research ecologist and he also works um, with Michelle at USDA um, ARS. Uh, Karen Feeder, where's Karen? Karen works at the Maryland Department of Ag. She's a senior agriculture marketing specialist at the Maryland Department of Ag, and then myself. So we all uh, work together. So this workshop today is really um, supported by the grant. And the grant, it's a USDA, they call it a NIFA grant. It's a National Institute of Food and Agriculture. The grant's name was Leveraging Long-Term Agroecological, mm, agro, I can't say that word, Agroecology, okay, anyway, research uh, to improve agriculture agronomic, economic, and environmental performance in organic grain production. The project is an integrated research and extension, organic research and extension in initiative program dress, and addresses three legislatively defined goals. And those three goals are facilitating the development of improvement of organic agriculture production, evaluating the potential economic benefits of organic agriculture production and methods to producers, or processors, and rural communities. And the third one is examining um, optimal conservation and environmental outcomes relating to organically produced agricultural products. So that's just a little bit about the, um, the grant. Uh, Michelle and Stephen will be presenting um, this afternoon and they'll both be talking a little bit about some of the research that, that they've done. So here with uh, us this morning, I want to introduce uh, Marion Fry. Marion uh, and her family, they farm in uh, Kent County and Anne Arundel County. They have Fair Hill Farms. Marion um, has been very instrumental in helping uh, put this program together uh, today. I always worry about, you know, we've got to get the education um, component of this out and I always, we want to put together a program that, um, that brings people in to learn. So we not only learn uh, from the research-based uh, information, but we learn from each other. So Marion also serves on the uh, Maryland Ag Commission and she represents the organic production. So Marion, if you'd like to come forward and give everybody a welcome, please. Thanks, Jenny. It's good to have everybody here this morning, and I'm delighted to welcome James Eichhorst, our Deputy Secretary of Agriculture, and he will bring greetings in a few minutes. Today's theme is opportunity. Now, it's not a theme that you will find written on the agenda, but that's what this industry is about for us in Maryland at this time. The most uh, recent statistics that have just been compiled in 2014 from the 2012 Organic Survey Census say that between the years of 2007 and 2012, product sales from organic farms in the United States grew 83%. This is a time when we're seeing in conventional agriculture a lot of stagnation and even farms moving backward because profit margins are so tight. Input costs continue to rise and the commodity prices sometimes are lower than 
farmers can make a profit from. Farmers who've been farming conventionally now are looking at organics as uh, an alternative for more opportunity. The organic industry here is very diverse. It's diverse ethnically, by age, by product, by farm size, and that in itself is a great opportunity. Most of conventional agriculture looks a lot like my husband and I, aging white people. Organics looks like everybody. Young people, urban people, rural people, middle-aged people, and those aging white people like me. There's an opportunity. And if you think about Warren Buffett's comments about creating a moat around your business to give you economic advantage, this organics can be your opportunity to create that moat, finding out what you do well, the scale at which you can make a profit and enjoy your life, and your market. So Jenny was pretty lavish in her uh, credits with how much I've participated in the program. But the one thing that um, I will say, we discussed whether to have a keynote, who might be a keynote, and together we felt like there is so much exciting uh, opportunity here in Maryland that instead of a keynote, it's important for people to know if I grow something, if I actually get into this business, what's my market? Who are the players in that? And so we decided that instead of bringing in someone from out of the region and maybe listening to what was going on in another area, we'd like to have opportunities available to people right here and let people see who the players are in the local markets. Now, whether you are considering transitioning your row crops, your grain farms to organic, or whether you grow vegetables and you're looking for a distributor for those, wherever you fall in the organic spectrum and whatever your motivation is for transitioning or being organic, there's opportunity. And that motivation can be, it's a better economic community and opportunity. It's, um, one motivation might be, I believe that I'm doing something beneficial for the environment. I believe that I'm doing something beneficial for human health. Whatever your motivation is, the organic program is a marketing model and there is a place for you. The thing that I would encourage is there is more profit to be made for your business if you are one of the early adopters. Organics is a consumer-driven business consumer demand and consumer perception are full fueling the growth in this industry. And so if you are an early adopter as a producer, there's more opportunity than if you wait until it's already um, a mature industry. And I would say the industry here in Maryland has good infrastructure, Jenny introduced the um, support team that you have, the go-to people for every aspect of your business, whether it's education at the beginning or marketing at the end. All of these people are very accessible and our community is small enough that it's easy for you to get in touch with them. And that makes a big difference when you're looking for your sales opportunities or you're in the field and suddenly you've got a problem 
need an answer, it makes a difference to be able to get hold of people. So I will say, if you've been considering organics, it's better to move ahead, whether it's a small piece of land or a few acres out of many that you have. I would urge you to move ahead instead of wait, because your greater opportunity lies with um, getting in now rather than waiting until it's a saturated market. So we're delighted to have everybody here, and I'll let uh, Jenny move the program forward. Thanks for coming. Uh, thank you, thank you, Marion. Uh, next, I want to introduce um, Jim Eichhorst. He is our um, Deputy Secretary of Agriculture. He, so he brings greetings from Maryland Department of Ag. So thanks for coming. And I'm going to have to pinch you because you don't have any green on this morning. <laughs> you actually already pinched me when I was sitting down. And uh, Eichhorst isn't very Irish. And since I quit drinking green beer years ago, I don't even think about St. Patrick's Day. But I, uh, I need to remember that next time. Uh, I just want to bring greetings from Governor Hogan and Ag Secretary Joe Bartenfelder. Uh, and I know Karen Fedor has been introduced already, but I'm going to introduce her again. Uh, we're very lucky at the Department of Ag. When I started there back in August, I was uh, quite frankly amazed at the depth of quality people we have. We have a whole bunch of farm kids that have, that have grown up and work at the Maryland Department of Ag because that's where they want to work. You know, they can make more money and have different opportunities elsewhere, especially if they want to drive a little bit farther into Washington. But the best of the best have decided to stay here in Maryland. And uh, when I look at Karen, I, I see that best of the best. So thank you for all you do. And I told you I was going to embarrass you, and you're turning red. So job well done this morning. Um, before I moved to Maryland about a year and a half ago, uh, I raised corn and soybeans on our family farm. Never tried organic production. Uh, and on the way over here, driving through the pea soup, I asked myself, you know, I. My farm was decent size, but really not big enough to make a living. I always worked off the farm. My wife had a great opportunity out here, so I followed her. And uh, it's been a great transition, but I do miss the farm. And one of the things I thought about was, why didn't I ever try organic? And I got to be honest with you, I was always afraid of having a bunch of weedy fields. I grew up in an area where everyone walked their soybeans. Uh, we walked them twice after cultivating them twice because we didn't want any weeds in the field. And that was a sense of pride back before the Roundup days and biotechnology. That's how you control weeds, especially in soybeans. Um, also, it was, there were two types of farmers where I'm from. You raise corn and soybeans or soybeans and corn. Very little livestock production. And you're blessed here in Maryland, especially on the eastern shore, to have a supply of high quality natural nutrients, and that being poultry litter and also litter from other livestock farms. We just didn't have that where I was from. Um, also, I don't know if there were any programs like this available where I came from. Uh, if there would have been, maybe I would have jumped into it with both feet and maybe I'd be back there on the farm instead of talking to you today. So I guess that's kind of your loss that I never tried that opportunity. Um, but Marion touched on something. Uh, when I look at conventional farmers, especially grain farmers now, the cost of production and the price they receive for those products, if they're lucky this year, they're going to come together. A lot of farms are going to see a loss. You just have absolutely no control over the price you receive if you're selling in a general commodity market. But with organic, you do. And one of the things I've always admired most about organic producers is that they have been able to capture more of that consumer's dollar. And that's something that can mean the difference between staying on that farm and going to do something else. Um, like I said, I just don't know a lot about organic production. Uh, I know a lot about farming, but not about organic production. But I am going to do something about that. I wish I could stay here today, but I can't, so in a couple weeks, I'm going to go spend part of the day with Mary and Fry and her family on their organic grain farm. And uh, I can't wait to do that. I'm looking forward to getting out of the office for a while, but also seeing how you all do business. So thank you very much for that invitation. Um, as you know, there's a lot of marketing opportunities for organic, whether it's uh, fruits and vegetables, grain, dairy, or whatever it is. Um, and the Maryland Department of Ag has an organic certification program that can be very helpful to you. Um, and I apologize for reading this, but I didn't know a lot about it. But the program is a federal cost share reimbursement program funded by USDA and allows the department to reimburse up to 75% of the inspection costs that growers pay for certification. And currently, MDA has certified 100 farms and 7,679 organic acres. 
I looked at your program this morning and there are a lot of fascinating, interesting speakers and you're, you're going to learn a lot more from them, from them than you are from me. So with that, I'm going to be quiet. I want to thank you for, have, for asking me to be here to say a few words and uh, have a great conference. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. And uh, since you can't stay for the rest of the day, uh, George Harvey is here from QATV. So we'll, we, we'll be videoing everything, and everything will be on YouTube. So, so you can catch up before you go to Marion's for a farm. So, good. I will ask uh, my first panel if they will make their way uh, forward. And I'll just do some housekeeping notes here. So this morning when you arrived, everybody got several uh, index cards. So what we're going to do is the panel, uh, they'll have 10 minutes to kind of introduce themselves and then um, write down your questions and uh, I have a couple people that will be collecting uh, cards. So write your questions down. Uh, make sure that you signed in this morning um, and make sure you completed your registration with Chesapeake College. We're very lucky. Uh, we work a lot with Chesapeake College, so this gives them some credits also for continuing um, education. The restrooms are out the door, um, well, to my left, and uh, breakfast is being served out there. Um, let's see. Make sure you have an agenda. Everybody get an agenda today. On the agenda um, also are sponsors, so make sure that you thank the sponsors that uh, came today. Make sure you spend some time and visit with them. This is all about um, networking also and learning uh, what's going on. Also um, today we have, um, it's called one-on-one -on -one entrepreneurial coaching. So have you ever really thought about a business or you're here today to think about maybe um, starting a new business or expanding what you have? So uh, Shannon Dill is here. She's the, um, my counterpart in Talbot County. And she'll have a half an hour to um, spend with you to talk about, kind of give you a, like a little reality check. Um, you can kind of bounce ideas um, off of her and she can steer you in, in the right direction of finding resources so you don't have to spend a lot of time you know, hunting and learning for things. So the sign-up sheet uh, is out at the registration table. They'll be every half an hour and then you can just meet Shannon at the table and then there's some classrooms we can use for that. Uh, let's see what else. I'm, I have to tell you, I'm very excited about um, today's program and um, it's amazing when you call people and ask them um, to do things and to step up to the to the plate and so like Marion said we just thought that it was really important that you know what is here you know what's what's here in in our region what, what are the opportunities here so